Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Dustin Kreiss, and it is brutally cold outside. Wow. Uh, I went to the store uh, to pick up some, just some random stuff, uh, food item-wise, and wow. <laughs> Winter is here. But uh, as you can see from the, um, the perspective here, it's time for another Drinking with Dustin. Uh, I'm going to do this one differently um, because I feel like if I do them separate... It's just going to be me posting nothing but drinking with Dustin's. And if I do um, these videos with a couple beers in each one, then they will definitely be uh, less prevalent on the channel. And the channel will go back to being more about video games. So um, what I'm going to do is I have three beers that I'm going to put in this video. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to drink them all tonight because two of these are really hefty. Um, so I don't know when this will actually air. Air. But, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and I'll show you the three beers uh, that I will be doing. This is going to be the Trilogy of Stouts. Um, first up is going to be the Left Hand Brewing Company, uh, their Milk Stout. And um, I've always wanted to try something from these guys. They're another one of the uh, Colorado brewers. You know, a lot of beers come from Colorado. Uh, this will be the one that we're going to do in this video, and we'll talk a little bit about it um, once I do it. Then we will also be doing, uh, while I was at the store, I found two things. Um, we'll be doing the Founders Imperial Stout. And uh, while, let's see here, uh, this the Milk Stout is 6% uh, alcohol. This jumps up to 10.5. And um, so, one, uh, you know, alcohol-wise, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to tolerate tonight. Uh, but two... Um, drinking stouts, they're really hefty, and um, I don't know how much I'll be able to drink in a row. So, yeah. So we're going to do that one second, and then the <laughs> the um, the coup de gras, if it as it were, is going to be the barrel aged Old Rasputin um, 15th anniversary edition, and uh, this is a big one. Uh, the let's see here, where is it at? 11.9% um, alcohol. And I know that normal Old Rasputin is still my number one uh, Imperial Stout. Uh, I haven't had one yet that's really um, touched it. So I'm really... Except for uh, there is a local brewery. I did a video on it. Um, Weasel Boy. That's close, pretty close to um, Old Rasputin in my book. Uh, but I'm really excited to see what their barrel-aged 15-year um, version is going to be. So uh, now that I've got this video started here, I see that the bottle opener is way back here. So hold on. Lack of preparation. Let's go ahead and without further ado, let's crack into this uh, left-hand brewing company uh, milk stout. Now while I was out, I also saw they have another kind of milk stout called nitro. And uh, I didn't pick that one up because I saw the Founders uh, Imperial Stout there. And I've had uh, Founders Breakfast Stout. If you can't tell, I love stouts. I just absolutely adore stouts. So, there we go. And let's see here. Anything? Uh, roasted malt and coffee flavors build this foundation. Build the foundation of this creamy, sweet stout. And... Um, I, I, now that I look at Left Hand Brewing Company's um, bottle, I actually really love it because it has a little thing here uh, telling you about the beer. Then it has your alcohol, of course. tells you the um, what temperature you should be uh, enjoying these at because temperature in beer is very important. And uh, it tells you the kind of glass you're supposed to drink it out of. And then it has the ingredients here, which the ingredients are Rocky Mountain Water, Malted barley hops, yeast, flaked oats, and lactose. So it does have some milk in there. And just for shits and giggles, uh, oh shit, where is it? Oh, there it is. Just for shits and giggles, let's see um, what the temperature of this actually is. Forty-seven point three degrees. So, a little, just a little too cold, 
by their what they say it should be uh, 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and um, give this one a go because I'm already at five minutes for this part one. No one's going to watch a 20 minute beer video. That is really good. Wow. It has definitely a nice sweetness to it, but also when it gets to the back end, you really get that nice roasted maltiness. And in terms of other stouts that I've had, this one's a little bit lighter in body, where a lot of stouts, i.e. Old Rasputin or um, some other ones, by the end of it, you really feel like you've ate a meal. And this one... It's about mid-range, I would say, in terms of its heaviness. Um, I had a stout not too long ago, and I can't even remember the name of it, where it literally felt like I was drinking water. Like, there was there was no heftiness to it. There was no, I don't know, for some reason, with a stout, you should feel like it has weight. Like, um, a lager beer, very light, very crisp. But a stout is something that it should almost feel heavy, you know? And, um, but this is a nice... If you're looking for a nice stout that uh, won't set you, I mean, I think a six pack is ten dollars. Won't set you back a lot of um, money, and you could drink, you know, maybe three or four of them in a night with if you're out with your friends and stuff. Uh, this is definitely a nice one. Um, I really do enjoy it. I don't know about the, you know, I'll have to look more into like what milk stouts because um, I'm not really familiar. <clears throat> with um, that version of a stout, like what the, what the milk actually, the lactose actually adds to it. Um, I'd be really interested to read more into that. So I think uh, when I get off here, I'm going to go do that. But uh, yeah, so that's it for uh, the Left Hand Brewing Company's Milk Stout. I, I definitely recommend it. Um, in terms of its roastiness, it's not really overpowering. Like some other beers, like your Imperial Stouts will be really overpowering with that sort of kick of roastiness. But this is a nice, a very nice stout to sort of branch out with. Because, I don't know, I, I for some reason I think usually people's first stouts are Guinness. Is Guinness? Whatever. Um, people's first stouts are usually a Guinness. And... Uh, just because of the, the prevalence of Guinness, you know. So it, it's nice to sort of have a lot of options to try to, you know, find your own stout. Because I think a lot of people taste Guinness, and Guinness is very dry. Um, and they sort of miss out on what a, a true, you know, not true stout, because Guinness is a true stout. But what a sort of different stout can be, what the, the variance in the, the styles. So definitely check this out if you're kind of on the fence about the the style of you know stouts because uh, this might be more up your alley than some of the other ones you've had. So anyway, uh, eight minutes. Wow, for this one. So um, hopefully the next two are a bit shorter now that I've explained the rules. But we'll be doing Founders Imperial Stout next. So stay tuned. Okay, everyone, welcome back to part two. Uh, a part that is was fraught with disaster. Um, one. Uh, I moved downstairs because it was darker, it started to get dark out, and uh, the lighting upstairs was just atrocious. So I came back down to the normal setup. Um, if you're like me, uh, you have a tendency to leave certain items on the floor, and Duncan just decided um, that, hey, I'm going to start grabbing things and running off with them and chewing them. Um, so uh, various items that should not be on the floor, that's because I was lazy, I left them on the floor. And then finally, after all that was done, uh, I started watching the, this part back, and everything was completely out of focus. So, fuck that. <laughs> um, but anyway, continuing on with part two, uh, which, you know, I just filmed not two seconds ago. Uh, we're going to go with Founders Imperial Stout. And I was very excited about this when I got it, or I saw it at the grocery store because um, I was a big fan of Founders Breakfast Stout. And unfortunately, you're gonna miss me pouring it, um, but 
I don't know if you can make it out in there. Uh, if you notice, the head is a lot darker in this beer um, than the milk stout. And the, the funny thing about stouts is everyone thinks that they're black. But if you actually hold them up to the light, you'll notice that they're very, very, very deep red. And um, the only beers that I've noticed that are actually black are the Imperial Stouts. And uh, so, yeah, I was very excited about this. And while it doesn't sort of overtake um, Old Rasputin as my favorite uh, Imperial Stout, this is a very, I, I cannot recommend this one enough. And it's unfortunate that I, I lost that first video to unfocused, uh, you know, but it's just extremely good. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a sip. We're going to do this whole thing like I actually just poured it. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about the flavors in it because it has a really amazing flavor to it. And so the first thing you get is with a Russian Imperial Stout, it should almost feel like the, the flavors of the the roasted chocolate, the the uh, the coffee flavors, all of that should just punch you right in the face. It should be a very, very aggressive flavor, at least for me. I know there's some Imperial Stouts out there. They're a little bit more mild, um, but this one is just, uh, it, it, you, it hits you really nicely with those sort of traditional Imperial Stout flavors. But the great thing about this one is on the back end, once you swallow it and you're kind of getting a... Um, you're kind of getting that aftertaste. It leaves a very wonderful flavor of blueberry in your mouth. And I've only experienced this one other time with a, an Imperial Stout, is when my local brewery, um, they did um, their Anastasia Imperial Stout, and they let it age for a year. And then they put that out, and of course, you know, a glass of that was like $10, but it was so worth it, and you just got these wonderful hints of blueberry on the end. And that is something, while it doesn't have the huge character of uh, on Old Rasputin, um, that blueberry flavor is really something that's really addictive. And I'm not sure if this is a seasonal, because a, uh, a lot of breweries um, put out Imperial Stouts as a seasonal around uh, the wintertime, which... If I read you the, the, the thing here, it says, Brewed with ten varieties of malted barley, this stout is smooth as silk, yet complex and rich in body. Uh, serve this guy at cellar temperature, put another log on the fire, sit back and enjoy the friendship of this ultimate winter warmer. So it's saying that it's a winter warmer leads me to believe that this is a seasonal. But this should be out, I mean, really all the time because it's just that friggin' good. Um... And I, I did a temperature check of when I poured it, and it was at 53 degrees, which is, you know, really kind of right on where you want it. You want it about 50 to 55, like the milk stout. But yeah, um, definitely a lot heavier than the milk stout, though. Um, uh, especially with, like, any kind of stouts, when you start to uh, drink them, you're going to feel like you're eating a meal. And this one is just noticeably, when you take that first swallow, you're like, whoa. There's a lot more um, body to this than there was the milk stout. <sighs> yeah, this completely blows the milk stout away, but at 10% alcohol uh, by volume, um, this is not going to be one that you're going to be able to drink a lot of um, because one, uh, <clears throat> you're going to start getting sort of that buzz really fast. But unlike with people who drink like um, Bud Light and Natty Light and things like that, um, you're, you're going to get full a lot faster. So you're not going to actually be able to get drunk on this one unless you're like, you haven't ate all day and the first one you drank just completely blows you over. But uh, this is one you definitely, I actually want to take one of these out of the fridge and drink it at room temperature. Because that's kind of a big misnomer with beer is that you're supposed to drink it ice cold. Because a lot of people um, drink like the Bud Lights, the Budweisers, the, the Miller Lights, all those you know crappy American beers um, that really should not be drank at anything but well, should not be drank at all. Let's be honest about that. But uh, should not be drank at anything above ice cold temperatures because 
when a beer warms up, it really opens up a lot of the flavors. Um, for some reason, you know, chilling it down really masks a lot of the flavor. So that's why a lot of people drink their beer ice cold. But really, uh, you should drink it just, you know, around that 50 degree mark. And even some of them, I would almost tell you that if you find a beer that you really like the taste of like this, I really enjoy the taste of it, set one out and drink it at room temperature and uh, see how the flavors change. It's kind of like whiskey. Uh, you always want to drink your whiskey, especially scotch. You always want to drink it uh, straight up um, the first time and then you know drop an ice cube into it and let that water sort of open up the flavors and uh, see how it changes. It's really kind of an interesting thing. But uh, yeah, Founders uh, Imperial Stout, definitely, if you see this on the shelf and you're a fan of stouts, and even if you're not, and you just want, you know, want to be adventurous and try something, um, go ahead and pick it up. But uh, it is uh, $10 for a four-pack, so take that into consideration. It's a little bit on the pricier end. But uh, definitely very good. And hopefully this is all in focus and... Um, I can go upstairs, play some Unchained Blades for a while, and then come back down and we'll do part three. And by that time, I will probably be completely soused. <laughs> so here we go, on to part three. The Old Rasputin uh, Barrel Aged... I should have brought the bottle down. Uh, bourbon Barrel Aged Stout, Imperial Stout, uh, for the 15-year anniversary. So All stay right. tuned. Back with part three of this trilogy of stouts. It's actually a couple days later than the first two parts uh, because uh, I just didn't want to come home and drink this just to drink it. I wanted to make sure I had time to sit back and enjoy it because it is a big bottle. And uh, But yeah, this is going to be sort of the coup de gras, the, the, the grand finale. It's going to be North, North Coast Brewing Barrel-Aged Old Rasputin. Um, this is for the 15th anniversary of Old Rasputin. And, uh, yeah, it's a Russian Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels. So, um, I've had uh, bourbon barrel aged uh, Imperial Stouts before by other brewers, and I've always enjoyed them. And Old Rasputin is my favorite um, beer. Yeah, my favorite beer, period. Um, so this is going to be something really special, and... Uh, I definitely wanted to make sure I had the time, and I have today off, and unfortunately no Nino Cooney Wizard Edition yet. I did get a confirmation email. It's supposed to be coming, but the, the mail is just taking its sweet-ass time. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this cork out of here and hope to God this thing doesn't explode on me. <laughs> I always get very leery with corks. Um... And by leery, leery, I mean they scare the bejesus out of me. There we go. I mean, I hope that picked up on the camera. That That's, oh, that's something. Um, these are uh, 500 milliliter bottles. And uh, they're $20 a bottle. So this is going to set you back a bit. It's not something just to pick up and drink on a whim. It's something to be sort of enjoyed. And... Um, Duncan, would you stop it? You can't have my cork. And, you know, fighting with the dog there, I just kind of almost ruined this pour. So, get! Um, he just loves being down here when I make videos. He just has to check everything out. Quit it! So anyway, uh, pour a little bit more in here. I got a massive head on this thing because I was too busy paying attention to what he was doing. But let's go ahead... And uh, check the temperature here and see if we're at a good drinking temperature. And it's right at 53 degrees, so that is actually really perfect. Oh my. So let's out, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, sink our teeth into this. Whoa! <laughs> um, you know, I've been making comment on the fact that um, Old Rasputin definitely punches you in the face with its flavor. And wow, right off the bat, I mean, when you first get into your mouth, you're kind of like, okay, this is good. And then you just take that swallow and you're like, um, This is 11.9% <clears throat> alcohol. So... Oh, yeah. 
Whoa. You definitely get that big, um, that big imperial stout flavor. Um, very, very good, but at the same time, it's good that these come in such big bottles and are twenty dollars a pop because you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to have an entire night of uh, drinking all this. Um, you can really, really get uh, the alcohol in it, and um, sometimes when these high level beers uh, come into play. The alcohol sometimes overwhelms the beer. Um, one that I always kind of think back on is um, EKU. Um, it's from Germany. And... Uh, dogs. Um, and uh, it, it, it does have a lot of alcohol in it. And when you first drink it, um, that's really what you taste is the alcohol. Um, this... You definitely get the alcohol taste, but there is the um, the old Rasputin flavor and a really heavy note of chocolate, uh, much more so than what's it, what I get out of normal <clears throat> old Rasputin. A really, really heavy note of chocolate. Definitely, um, when you first, even when you smell it. When you smell it, it just smells like bourbon. And when you first get it in your mouth, you do get kind of a bourbon flavor to it. Sort of the sweetness of a bourbon. And then it sort of um, <clears throat> morphs into that uh, really sharp Old Rasputin uh, flavor. And then as it, as it goes down the back of your throat, you just get a wash of chocolate. Really finishes nice. Um, I think, though, I have to say... Gotta keep going because I only got one bottle. <laughs> but um, I, I think that while Old Rasputin, the, the original version, will always be sort of my favorite uh, normal beer, I, out of this, this trilogy, I might have enjoyed Founders a little bit more. Um, just because this one, I mean, this is a big, big beer. Um, and I think Founders is just a little bit more manageable uh, because this is, you know... It, Honestly, this is a special edition. It's not something that's supposed to be like like the Founders, which is uh, much more drinkable. This is a bigger um, sort of adventure when you buy these big bottles of beer um, and these sort of special uh, things. But um, I, I think I like the blueberry finish of Founders a little bit better than the chocolate finish of this. I mean, kind of think about how, you know, when you take a, if you take a big slug of whiskey and you haven't cut it with water or ice or anything and how you, you, you swallow it and you're like, oh, that's fine. And then all of a sudden you get that sort of that, um, I don't know how to describe it, smokiness. I don't like saying smokiness because that's usually how I describe uh, scotches, but you just get sort of that, uh, you know, that uh, feeling, uh, you kind of get that with this and, um. I don't know, you know? Um, it's definitely very, very good. I'm going to put it out to you that way. However, I think that uh, unlike, I would say, the Founders Stout, Imperial Stout, which I think is a great um, sort of introductory beer into uh, Russian Imperial Stouts because it does have that nice blueberry finish, uh, this is one for people who really do enjoy uh, the style because... It, it, it's not as, for some reason, this is not as brutal as normal Old Rasputin. Like, normal Old Rasputin has a really roastiness, almost like it feels like it's drying your mouth out, that roastiness. And this is a lot smoother, even with that, uh, that sort of bourbon, you know, alcohol hit. But uh, for people who really do enjoy uh, the style, this is a nice one to pick up and definitely check out. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go back up and uh, watch some more Doctor Who. Uh, get back into Unchained Blades. Try to finish that up. I'm on chapter six, and I think there's seven chapters. And uh, just sit back and wait for Nino Cooney. Uh, I got today and the next two days off, so hopefully, um, maybe it's a UPS delivery and uh, it just hasn't got here yet. Or if the mail's bringing it, hopefully uh, it gets here tomorrow, and um, I'll be able to play it and finally give some impressions on it. I, I keep watching. 
you know, Pete Doerr did an unboxing, and all these people are doing sort of impressions on it, and uh, I, I'm not watching any of it because I, I just I want to experience it for myself. So, but anyway, um, I hope you like uh, this sort of trilogy style video. Let me know if you prefer me doing the, uh, the beers individually, and so they're shorter, or if you like these longer videos where I do maybe three or so beers um, every video. So. Uh, just trying to uh, rethink how I'm doing these. Also, um, I'm thinking about doing another uh, cocktail uh, for you guys. But I have to order some of the ingredients. Um, there's a lot of different styles of bitters out there. And unfortunately, the only ones I can get to are Angurista uh, bitters. Um, so I'm going to have to order a different style of bitters for this drink. But hopefully, um, I can get all the ingredients together and present this. Because I've made a poor man's one. And I might do a video on that as well, <clears throat> after I do the real uh, cocktail. But, um, yeah, I really do enjoy uh, the cocktail that I've at least made. So I'd like to make it uh, sort of the real way uh, for the video. And then I'll make it the poor man's way. So, but anyway, uh, Old Rasputin Barrel-Aged Russian Imperial Stout. Uh, very good, but um, like I said, this is not for um, somebody that's new to the style or somebody who's just, you know, if, if you're just um, wanting something to take out with your friends to drink, um, I would almost recommend picking up a four-pack of the normal Old Rasputin because it's cheaper and you get more beer, And uh, but this was definitely very good. However, I, you know, at $20 a bottle, I don't know how many of these I'll be picking up. Probably uh, this will be my only one this year, so there we go. Ended on a burp. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time.